How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be diagnosing and fixing a Troy-built riding lawnmower that won't start. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So today in the shop, we are working on a Troy built with a Kohler SV710 engine. Now you guys might remember this engine from the Kohler third generation starter video that I did. So there's gonna be three different generations of starters for these mowers. The first two have design flaws that lead to failure. So you're gonna want the third or the latest generation starter. If you wanna see that video, very important information included in that one. I will link it in the top right of the screen. But for today, we're working on a common issue that plagues a lot of riding lawnmowers. And solving this problem is a very simple fix. So my customer lets this mower sit outside quite a bit. You can see I have the towel on the seat because it was soaking wet. It just finished raining and my customer said that the riding mower would not start. He turns the key, the engine cranks over, but it just wouldn't fire up and run. Now I've already done some basic work to diagnose the issue. I know what the issue is and I'm gonna be taking you through some basic steps on how to solve this issue on your own riding lawnmower. So one of the first things you're going to do is take the air filter out of the air box and then get yourself a little bit of small engine carb cleaner. I recommend not using ether because it is very flammable and can cause detonation in some engines. You don't want that. So a little bit of carb cleaner and all you're gonna do is spray it into the hole where the air filter covers. That goes back through your intake manifold, essentially bypassing the carburetor's job of supplying fuel to the engine. So using something like this, you're supplying a flammable liquid to the engine directly into the cylinders. Come over to your engine's throttle and we're going to throttle it up into the high speed position. You can see this one has the choke mechanism integrated into the throttle. We're gonna address that topic in a moment. Now on this particular machine, we are going to have to engage the brake and it has a parking brake lever here. So while depressing the brake, we can push that down, let off of the brake, and now the parking brake is engaged. This will allow you to start the engine without engaging the seat switch. So you don't have to be sitting on the seat as long as your PTO is in the disengaged position. So at this point, we can turn the key and start the engine. So you heard it yourself, the engine starts and it runs quite smooth. So what is the issue? Well, there could be quite a few issues and I'm just gonna run you through some basics before we solve today's issue. One of the number one issues that I face as a small engine mechanic is when customers say they leave their equipment outside, water in the fuel is a very common issue. So sometimes fuel tanks can be vented where they're gonna have a hole on the top there. And if you leave your equipment sitting outside, rainwater can go through that vent into your tank. And I've actually seen instances where there was this much water in a tank and the rest of it was fuel. Now, because water always settles to the bottom and the fuel line hooks up at the bottom of the fuel tank, your carburetor is going to be the first thing that gets that water and your engine will not run on water. So what I did was just got an empty jar here and I drained some of the fuel out of the fuel line into the jar. What you're looking for is water settling to the bottom and there is no water in the fuel of this engine and the fuel smells fresh. And my customer did mention that he runs 91 premium, which in our location is ethanol free. Now ethanol is actually an alcohol made from corn and alcohol will attract water. So as you could imagine, the 87 octane fuel here in Ontario, Canada has 10% ethanol. The 89 octane has 5% ethanol and our 91 octane premium fuel has 0% ethanol. So an 89 is just a 50-50 mix between the lower grade 87 and the higher grade 91. Now, even if you don't leave your equipment outside, the ethanol content in the fuel tank can actually absorb moisture from the air itself. So if you were to let a piece of equipment sit for an extended period of time, such as a riding lawnmower sitting from the last cutting in the fall time all the way to what is now April the 17th in the spring, you could end up with water in your fuel tank 
even if you stored this equipment in a somewhat dry climate. And I actually have a video on how to test ethanol content in fuel, which I will also link in the top right of the screen so you guys can check that video out. So like I said, the fuel is good. We sprayed it with some carb cleaner and it fired right up. So that lets us know that both cylinders on this V-twin engine have compression and that both cylinders have spark and everything else that it needs to run. And once it does start and run, it runs perfectly smooth, which lets us know that both the main jet in the carburetor, which is supplying fuel under load, and also the pilot jet, which will supply the fuel under an idle condition, they are both clean. If they were gummed up and clogged full of debris, this engine would not run as smooth as it did. So what is the issue? Well, going back to this throttle cable here, as I mentioned, it does have the choke mechanism integrated into one lever. So to start your engine, you would push this all the way forward into the choke position. So coming down to the front of the engine, this is going to be our governor and speed control area here as well as the linkage that controls the choke mechanism. Now we are currently in the low RPM position and I will push the lever up until the throttle is in the high speed position. That's where it clips into that little groove. And on this particular engine, this is our throttle and choke lever. So once you push that lever far enough, this wire here gets pulled back, which pulls this linkage here, which then moves this linkage, pushing this rod, and lifting it to engage the choke. So I will once again put the throttle into the highest position, which should fully engage the choke plate inside of the carburetor. Now using a permanent marker here, I went down to the cable, and you guys are gonna notice that right on the right of that tab that holds that cable into position, I've just marked it with the permanent marker. And what we're going to be doing is seeing how much more this linkage moves past the point where the cable itself moves it. So all you have to do is come down to this and lift it up. So you see how much that moves? This means that when you engage the choke on your throttle lever on the console by the steering wheel, it is not actually fully engaging the choke plate on the carburetor itself. And just to help explain what I'm talking about here, I have a carburetor off of a Briggs & Stratton V-twin engine. It has a dual barrel carburetor right here with the choke plate up front and the throttle plates at the back. So this here is what lets more air and fuel into your engine. But this right here is the choke plate. So basically what I'm talking about is if the choke plate can't close, while you're trying to start the engine, because that linkage down there is out of adjustment, then what happens is you're trying to start your engine with a choke plate that might only be halfway closed. So once again, it cannot create the proper suction that it needs to pull the fuel from the bowl up the main jets into the barrel of the carburetor to get back into the engine. So by properly adjusting that cable, when you go to engage your choke knob or the speed control lever, you are now fully closing that choke plate, which will create the rich fuel mixture your engine needs to start. Now, one of the ways that you can easily identify if you have this issue where the choke plate simply isn't engaging all the way, all you have to do is do exactly what I did at the beginning of this video. Spray the carburetor with some carb cleaner and get your engine fired up and running. Once it's running, go to your throttle speed control lever and push the lever all the way into the choke engage position. Now, generally, nine times out of 10, if the choke plates close fully, your engine should shut off due to it having too much of a rich mixture. Now, sometimes, depending on how your carburetor is designed, your engine might just run really rough and you're gonna see a lot of black smoke coming out of the muffler. That's totally normal for an engine running under a rich mixture. However, if you don't notice that your engine starts to run rough, then that is a very good indication that when you put that speed control lever into the choke engage position, the choke plates are not actually closing on the carburetor. And next up, I'll show you how to easily solve this issue. So coming back down to this throttle cable and a little bracket there, you guys can see that there is a screw and it does have a Torx head on it. And in this case, it is what's known as a T25 Torx bit. So you're going to need one of those to loosen that screw off. 
Now, once again, I have marked the right side of that cable just to give myself an idea of where the cable used to be. So once I properly adjust this cable so the choke plates are engaging fully, that little mark there will give you a good indication of just how much these get out of spec over time. Now, it might be difficult to get in here because of the muffler, but I should be able to have enough room just to back that screw off. You don't have to take it out completely. Once again, we want the speed control lever to be pushed all the way forward. If you had a separate choke knob that you had to pull, at this time, you would wanna pull your choke to the point where it was fully engaged. Now, I told you guys that this was a super easy fix. So once you get that screw loosened off a bit, all you have to do is grab onto the cable. Now this is under some tension, but I'm gonna try to get it on a shot for you. You'll notice that my mark from the permanent marker is still there. So at this point, all you're going to do is pull the cable to the outside. And you see how much farther that moved? It literally pushes that linkage there and that choke rod up about, what is that, a half an inch? So I've now pulled the cable out and I've tightened the screw down and I've also marked it a second time farther to the left. So you guys can see that's about maybe a quarter of an inch that the cable itself moved, which is going to be a huge adjustment. So now that the cable is properly adjusted, you guys are gonna notice, I'm trying to push up on it right now, does not move anymore, which means that the linkage here going all the way up to the choke plates in the carburetor is now in the proper position when the choke is fully engaged on the console, which means when this engine is cold, my customer throttles it all the way up to the point where the choke is engaged, he will turn the key and the engine should start without the use of carb cleaner. Now, like I said, the engine we're working on today is a Kohler SV710, also known as a Kohler Courage 20 horsepower V-twin. However, a lot of Craftsman engines with Briggs and Stratton and all kinds of different engines use a very similar system to engage the choke lever on their engines. And as I said, this cable becoming improperly adjusted over time is a very common issue that creates a no start situation. So once again, our throttle lever is pushed all the way forward to the point where the choke is engaged. The parking brake is also engaged. So now I should be able to turn the key and the engine should start, and then I'll have to throttle it back down to disengage the choke mechanism. So that is how you fix a no start on one of these Kohler Courage engines. And then what I did there was I took the choke off to let you hear what it sounds like. And then I put the choke back on to let you hear what it sounds like before I took it off again. So you'll notice that once the choke was engaged, the engine did start to sputter. You could audibly hear the choke being engaged, creating too rich of a mixture, which caused the engine to run a bit rougher. And before I reinstall the plastic engine cover, I've just taken the air compressor to blow out all of the governor springs, just to make sure that there's not a buildup of debris on them so that this engine operates properly. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content, and as always, thanks for watching.